Foundation and the Board of Directors of the Henry Salvatore Center of Claremont McKenna College, the Intercollegiate Studies Institute, and the Claremont Institute. In 2015, Dr. Arn received the Bradley Prize from the Lynn and Harry Bradley Foundation. Recently, he was appointed to former President Trump's 1776 Commission, which was established to restore in American education an understanding of the history and the principles of the founding of the United States. Published widely in national newspapers, magazines, and periodicals on issues of public policy, history, and political theory, Dr. Arn is the author of three books, Liberty and Learning, The Evolution of American Education, The Founder's Key, The Divine and Natural Connection Between the Declaration and the Constitution, and What We Risk by Losing It, and Churchill's Trial, Winston Churchill and the Salvation of Free Government. He travels tirelessly to educate others and raise support for the college, yet still finds time to frequent the cafeteria and have lunch with students, as well as teach classes in politics and history. He and his wife, Penny, have four children, Henry, Katie, Alice, and Tony, and recently welcomed their first grandchild, Charlotte. Please join me in welcoming our dedicated and accomplished president, Dr. Larry Arn. Welcome back. Uh, I've enjoyed seeing your children these last couple of days. I'm sorry to say that none of them is as attractive as our new grandchild. Uh, thank you, Carrie. Colleen McGinnis, who's setting the world on fire. I thank her very much. We should all thank her. <laughs> this summer homecoming is another crazy thing she thought up. Uh, I'm confused by our awardees this year, three of them. One of them's not confusing. Uh, Brent and Kevin are very confusing because I can't think of them except as 19 years old. And they look a little older than that, but not much. And uh, I, I saw their names on the list, and I said, wait, that guy? Uh, Brent, football player, ridiculous. Uh, Dale Allen is confusing, because he looks like he's 19 years old. <laughs> Only Marianne do I understand. And that's because we've worked with her a bunch. And uh, she's always been the way she is right now, in my knowing. And I will tell you that it was a, a happy day when we offered her a job, John Savini did, and she turned it down. And when John told me the news that she turned it, I said, yeah, it doesn't matter. She's working for free now. <laughs> <laughs> I congratulate all of you. That's a great thing. Uh, I'll give a little report from the college. We're having a schizophrenic year. We have just had a schizophrenic year. We never saw the like. Uh, your uh, college staff, I'm uh, so grateful to them. We've been working together a long time and we figured some things out. And this year we needed to know them. It's schizophrenic. We have had a spectacular year. The best ever financially in admissions and recruiting new faculty members and staff. Uh, the first 350 kids that did not get on the wait list this year are at the 92nd percentile in the entrance exams. Uh, the freshman class this year is coming in one point below Harvard. Uh, we could have matched Harvard if we would just take all the ones who take a, make a perfect score but we don't like them showing up here telling us how great they are. It's uh, applications for faculty jobs and all kinds of jobs. They're just awesome. And they're people who could get a job anywhere. Uh, we've hired a new choral director for the Sacred Music Program. And 
he built the sacred music program at Catholic University. He's 45 years old, he's at the peak of his career, and he's a big Orthodox Catholic. And he applied for our job. And I sat down in my office and I said, so why would you come here? And he said, you know the answer to that. I'll tell you the answer to it. Uh, we are civil, we have a common mission, we believe in it, we argue with each other freely, but never at the impairment of friendship or collegiality. In other words, it's a college, and there are very few left today. We've, uh, the Lord has built all this. It's amazing, you know, the college is prosperous. We have uh, a net worth of over $1.1 billion, up from $400 million, $350 million. How'd that happen? So that's the happy part. Uh, this year has been, 2020 has been a disastrous year for the American nation and placed it, in my opinion, in a peril that's like the one at the time that the college was founded. It's an interesting thing about the college that it's always been at its peak when there's a crisis in the world. I think we're a college made to fight. Ordinary times are not very good for us. Uh, it never happened before, but this year, we got an order from the governor of Michigan to shut us down. And that was, by the way, an executive branch action alone. And in 177 years, we never saw that. So we did decide to resist, resist that. First, I had to satisfy, we had to satisfy ourselves, I had to satisfy myself that this is not gonna kill college students. Because the idea that a bunch of college students are gonna be socially distanced is only possible to hold by somebody who no, doesn't know anything about it. <laughs> you know, they, uh, the whole place turned into a conspiracy. Because like, uh, we have the protections in place, and for commencement, we observed them because the governor was watching. And at that time, last July, the limit was 100 people. So we had 28 groups of 100. <laughs> and you know, we put all the protections in place. And, uh, and the kids cooperated marvelously. And they knew, they, they'd say to me, we know you don't believe in this, but." We understand why we have to do it. Well, we told the governor six weeks out and ask, and two week, four weeks out, and two weeks out, and we heard nothing. We can't tell, and see what that means? That means she wanted us to take the responsibility for canceling the thing. But then on Thursday, as the people were beginning to arrive, the deputy attorney general called our local prosecutor and said, uh, they're breaking the law, let's shut them down. And I can repeat the conversation. Neil Brady, a very great man. I just gave him an honorary degree, having intended to do it for years. Now we did it. He said, well, they've got all these protections. And they said, yeah, but they're over the limit. And he said, yeah, but you've got that First Amendment ar argument, which is why the riots, I mean, the demonstrations have been allowed to proceed. And the man said, this is an attorney, I think, but this is a planned event. Now parse that out for a minute. You can enjoy your First Amendment rights unless you intend to do it in advance, <laughs> right? Now, the First Amendment is the First Amendment because it is a amendment to protect the specific operations of the human soul, right? The Second Amendment is more about the body. This is the highest thing, right? So then Neil Brady gave him the clincher argument. He said, you know, these are sophisticated people and determined, and I have seen their legal papers, and you could be beat here. And the Deputy Attorney General replied, I see, you're right, we shouldn't do anything. 
Do you know what that means? He's just a bully. Why would we have in commencement? It's our job. Last year, we got 7% of our revenues from the students here. We hope to make it zero. Because then, by, what, by, by cracky, we'll really own them. And they'll have to do everything. <laughs> Because you can, you know, you have to turn it into a college, into a partnership. Everybody has to know why they're here. Everybody has to think the same thing about that. And then the myriad inconveniences and disadvantages don't seem somebody else's fault. And we've done that here. And it's the proudest thing we've done by a lot. There's no reason for any of us to argue because we've agreed about the ends. Now we just fight about the means all the time. Lord, do we not do that? But they're never very serious. And another college president, because I was trying to shame the athletic conference into having sports. And see, they get 85 or 90% of their money from the students. But 70 or 80% of that actually comes from the government. And I said to him, I said to the athletic conference, I said, can you feel the life seeping out of your college? I know they're not paying you any money, but the government does, and they won't pay if they don't come. Why would they come? And the one of them said to me, but you don't get your money that way. I said, no, we don't. And they said, then why do you care so much? And I said, there are just two reasons. One of them is, this turns out to be my line of work. We said we would. We love it. But the second reason is like unto it. The activity here, this is all just like a nuclear reactor. And it burns very hot. And it radiates the entire country. Everybody knows what it is. Everybody knows it stands up. A minority hated for that, and that means we have enemies, and they're laying for us. But on the other hand, millions of people think it constitutes hope. We're very determined to keep that going. The race riots come. And so now everybody, the only way to be safe is to confess that you're a racist and call everybody else one too. And that means, by the way, that the only safe harbor is a lie. And that can't be a safe harbor. So we didn't do that. You know, nobody else failed to do that. And now there's a new majority in America, by hook or by crook. Mostly crook, I think. And everything is threatening. The tools are in place to destroy Hillsdale College. Uh, some of them were put in place by Republicans, by the way. But now there are people in charge who would like to do that. I have said forever, because I'm cursed by a knowledge of politics, I always said, uh, you know, you're the ones, people say to me, that are independent of the government and can't be harmed by it. I always say, you should learn more about government. Because if this country becomes a despotism, then Hillsdale College and everything else will be despotized. And that means you could just easily make the argument today that this is a losing battle. I have said to the board three times, because I don't own the college. They don't own it either. It belongs to the beneficiaries. Uh, that means none of us knows it, owns it, right? It belongs to the people it is meant to serve down through time. And we, whom it has served, owe a special amount because we're supposed to preserve it for the ones who come later. By the way, you are the group who understand that, which is why you sit in this room. And I can't tell you how grateful I am to you. I said to the board, I said, you know, we have some money now. And uh, we could afford to run the college more quietly. And that might not be dangerous. And that's your decision. I have to present the option to you. Well, the first time I said it, I couldn't get them to talk about it. 
And the second time I said it in a different board meeting, I said, you, you have to talk about this. You have to figure it out. Because things are going to happen, probably. And uh, so they did. They talked about it for about six minutes. And nobody, nobody wanted to do that. And then Chairman Broadbeck said, uh, so what would we do if you said yes, if we said yes to that change? And I said, well, I do not come in here to give the board an ultimatum. They represent at the highest authority the beneficiaries of the college. I work for you and you work for them. And so if you told me to do that, I would know how and I would set the college on that path. And, and then Broadbeck said, what would you do after that? And I said, well, I'm in the world conquest business. I would go look for a way to do that. Because it cannot be permitted that the freedom of the American people is compromised because we are still the last best hope of mankind on earth. And it's in peril now. I told the board uh, last week, I said, uh, there are three things happening here, each one of which in 10 years might be bigger than the college is today, the whole college. Uh, the governor of Tennessee has just asked me to open 50 charter schools and promised me that they'll all be approved and that they'll all be quickly funded. And I said, well, governor, that's hard. And he said, why is it hard? And I said, well, how many charter schools you got now? And he said, 70. I said, are they any good? He said, no. <laughs> and I said, well, it's easy to build that kind. <laughs> you know, the, <laughs> the good kind takes talent. See, there's Hannah, right? If that girl doesn't end up working for me, I'm going to shoot her. Because she went to Hillsdale College, and she's talented, and she'd better get her tail going to save the world. Our weapon is teaching. Uh, we've got a remote education center in Washington, D.C., four buildings now, uh, a graduate school. It's just thriving. And they all want to come here and get a Ph.D. And, you know, some of them are senior people on co congressional committees. And we've got one we just opened in Summers, Connecticut, that contains an exact replica of Monticello, and we just had a conference in there for the first time. And the guy who gave it to us, the founder of Friendly Ice Cream, gave us $25 million to take care of it. The commissioner of education in Florida was here the other day, and he brought a uh, bunch of board members from an unnamed college. I, I won't say it's a Florida college. And I'm used to, we're used to board members and presidents coming here to ask us, how the hell do we do this? They always say, uh, how do you raise all that money? And I always say, I don't. And they say, who does? And I say, the people who give it. Very important to remember that fact. Makes every one of them a partner with us and a full partner with us. Anyway, the Commissioner of Education came to say that he wants us to take over civic literacy tra training in inner cities in Florida. Because in our 25 charter schools in our academy, we have never failed to graduate a kindergartner who could read. And the reason they can read is because they can already read, because they've already learned to talk. And nobody taught them that. Little, uh, what's his name? Mariano Rivera, uh, the baby of Reagan, cool, whatever her last name is now. And she's sort of my girl, right? But that boy, he's six months old, five months old. He's going to be talking in a year and a bit. And nothing can stop it. Well, reading is the same principle. You just have to figure out that the sounds also apply to marks on a page. He said, I want you to do all of that. I said, OK, I'll talk to him. That's a lot. He said, you can do it. I don't know if we can do it. I just know that we will. Then the guys from the college come, and they explain what's going wrong in their college. You know, it's woke, and it's all this, and we're drifting. And I said, you're not drifting, you're dying. Liberal education is dying in America. There are 963 private colleges. Mark Kaltoff, 
gave a really great talk today, and he pointed out, that's like 100,000 kids go to all those colleges put together against the millions who go to the third and fourth and eighth tier public universities where the education is not what you'd call elite. And I, I don't mean elite to be elite. I mean suitable to make an excellent human being. That's what they're for. And they don't do it now. And they said, well, how can we stop dying? And I said, well, you're going to have to understand it's a war. You're actually going to have to risk everything every day. He said, what would you do about the woke faculty? And I said, well, if I committed the evil of hiring them, then I would have to fire them. Well, the plot revealed at the end is they want to give us that college. But that's one of about six right now. And we're not going to take them all, but we might take that one. It's kind of pretty, and it's a good spot. And, uh, and you see, our online courses, almost 3 million people have taken them. We added, uh, what did we add, 400,000 last year. And uh, a, a really inspiring man named Tony Batman, really his name, a Texan, He's given us $20 million to endow them, but on condition that we spend an extra $7 million marketing them so they can get really big. And that's, you know, not everybody could make that deal, but we can afford to do it. And we're going to start these dual enrollment courses, which means we'll give academic credit, and that means that if, if those go, we're going to start them pretty soon. And if they go, then Mitch Klingenberg who's in this room, and Paul Mueller, who's in this room, they're going to go into a more honest line of work than the one they're in right now. <laughs> We've always been good when we're hurting. And I, I'm proud. I came here because of that. I found that out. I never wanted to work a college a day in my life and never did work in a college a day in my life until I came here. But I learned about those people who went to Gettysburg and that they were f students of friends of Abraham Lincoln. And I thought, that's a calling. Why don't we do that again? I think we have been appointed to do a great act in the cause of human freedom, likely at great cost to ourselves. And we're going to try to find the courage to do that. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Dr. Arn. The Hillsdale College Alumni Association was organized at the close of the Civil War. Upon its founding, the association adopted its own mission statement, which called upon its members to keep the alumni fully informed, help maintain the standards of the college, aid in the enrollment of new students, and encourage all alumni to tangibly support the college by developing programs to ensure its continued growth. Today, our 30-member Alumni Association Board works hard to lead more than 15,000 Alumni Association members to honor and uphold this 152-year commitment. For nearly 70 years, it's been a tradition to hold a banquet to recognize the achievements and service of some of our most outstanding graduates. This is what brings us here this evening, and tonight we will be recognizing five outstanding alumni. Their achievements are detailed in your table programs, and I encourage you to read them if you have not already done so. I will make an introduction of each honoree, and it will be followed by a short video, after which Dr. Arn and I will present their award, and each recipient may make a few remarks if they wish. So let's begin. Our first honoree this evening is Kevin Myers, class of 2009. Kevin Myers is the co-founder and CEO 
of Lucy Darling, a line of boutique children's products sold now in thousands of stores across the globe. Since graduating from Hillsdale with majors in history, German, and education, Kevin moved to Arizona to teach. A few years later, he met his wife, Haley, who is the creative vision behind Lucy Darling's brand. Shortly after their first child, Lucy, was born, the two decided to take Haley's Etsy business to the next level. Kevin eventually quit teaching and worked alongside Haley to start and develop Lucy Darling full time. Since its incorporation in 2012, Kevin has grown the brand to sell and sh ship globally. Three of the top 10 best-selling baby albums on Amazon are Lucy Darling products and you can find them in small and large retailers such as Anthropology, Nordstrom, Land of Nod. Kevin and Haley are active in their church and love to travel globally together with their family. Kevin is also an active volunteer for the college, serving admissions, hosting alumni receptions at his home, and flying back to campus to speak on entrepreneurship. He's also a member of the President's Club, he and Haley have three children, Lucy, June, and Bear. Please give your attention to the screen to meet our 2020 young alumnus, honoree, Kevin Myers. Tons of guys out for, for this, uh, for dinner. Uh, 
Thank you, Kevin. Dr. Arn is joining us up here. That man married almost as much above himself as I. Kevin, on behalf of the Alumni Association of Hillsdale College, it's my great honor to present you with the Young Alumnus Award for Outstanding Professional Achievement in Entrepreneurship. And I give you this plaque, uh, Dr. Arn, and I will give this to you. It is dated September 12, 2020. We're just a little behind. <laughs> Originally, this wasn't optional, um, but here we go. Uh, you know, it's funny that Dr. Arm was also confused by me receiving this award because I, I, I shared that uh, initial surprise when Colleen called me. In fact, I, I uh, sort of half joked with her that the well must be running dry uh, for her to give me that call finally. But I'll tell you, you know, being back here on campus, hearing uh, the professors again, and just seeing some other uh, alumni, it's clear that the well is, is not dry. In fact, uh, I, I'm just so inspired and so uh, honored just to be with you guys, uh, to see what you all are doing. Um, hearing from Mitch, hearing from Paul, uh, you know, it's just awesome. Uh, Taylor, what you guys are doing in, in Nebraska is just inspiring. Um, uh, yesterday morning, Dr. Connor delivered his final lecture at Hillsdale College for the fourth time. 
uh, he outlined the, the dominoes that fell into the onset of the Great War. The fall of some of these dominoes seemed inevitable, while others were clearly the result of a choice. Similarly, in each of our lives, uh, things happen to affect our lives that are outside of our control, and others occur as a direct result of our choices. We tend to prefer to assign the bad outcomes to chance and the good to our own efforts. I remember about five years ago having a conversation with a friend, and she was familiar with what was going on. She knew that we were you know, getting into Nordstrom and all this kind of stuff, and, and she said to me uh, in the parking lot of our church, she said, wow, God's favor has really been on your business. And it shames me now to say this, but I bristled inside. She didn't know. But inside, I, I thought to myself, well, you don't know all the hard work. You don't know the late nights, the sacrifices, financial and otherwise, that went into creating what we had achieved. But this, as Solomon would say, is vanity. When Moses was delivering his final lecture to the Israelites, before they entered the promised land, he recognized our human depravity and how we are prone to accept false credit for God's blessings. He said, lest when you have eaten and are full and have built good homes and live in them, and when your herds and flocks multiply and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, then your heart is lifted up and you forget the Lord your God. Beware lest you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to be successful. There's a lot that goes into success. Here at Hillsdale, we say that virtue rejoices in the challenge. But how do we gain virtue? Solomon said to seek wisdom like silver and search for it as hidden treasures. This habit of seeking wisdom, beauty, good, the habit of seeking wise counsel, these are things that I learned here. They have shaped and molded me in such a way as to be able to experience in some small way God's inestimable blessings. I don't have time this evening to tell you how the hand of God led me to Hillsdale College, nor the ways in which he has guided, directed, and enabled our business to be successful. But I'm deeply grateful for my time here. I'm deeply grateful for the virtue that I gained, for the people that I love, and the great wisdom and modeling that I received. I would be remiss not to mention a few people. Uh, of course, my wife, who's at home with our three kids back in Arizona, uh, who's made my dreams come true. <laughs> to Doc for his friendship. Um, to my parents always for believing in me, to my aunt and uncle for hosting me, and to my, <laughs> my roommate Tim, who put up with a lot, uh, but also had some good conversations along the way. Uh, Hillsdale College is a special place, and I'm very honored to have been chosen for this award. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Our next honoree this evening is Brent Ogle, class of 2002. Brent and his wife, Lindsay, join us this evening from Columbus, Nebraska area. Brent is the co-owner of Blazer Manufacturing, a company that specializes in manufacturing athletic equipment for high schools and colleges, as well as fuel storage solutions in a separate division. Brent has grown the business by 50% since acquiring it in 2015. When he's not managing his company or spending time with his family, Brent is serving his local community. He dedicates his time weekly to Youth for Christ, a Christian youth organization in Columbus. They recently named he and his wife the honor of Volunteers of the Year. Brent is active in his church and also serves on the Columbus Planning Commission. If that wasn't enough, Brent coaches two football teams, two basketball teams, spring and fall soccer, and a baseball team. And oh, he's also the president of the city YMCA board. 
Brent has majored in marketing management at the college and was a member of Sigma Chi, serving as president his junior year. He's also a proud Charger football linebacker, but his crowning accomplishment was meeting and marrying his fellow Charger, Lindsey Berlin. Lindsey was a Pi Phi, played soccer, and is a Valparaiso law grad. Brett and Lindsay are active volunteers with the college, serving in a number of capacities and are members of the President's Club. The Ogles have four children, Alexander, Emma, Liam, and Max. Please give your attention to the screen to meet our distinguished alumnus honoree, Brent Ogle. I grew up only 30 minutes from Hillsdale College, and we would go to a lot of sporting events there in mid to late 80s in Hillsdale. Customers that I deal with are dealing with high school sports and high school athletes and collegiate teams. I get to talk sports with them at trade shows and in meetings and couldn't imagine anything better. I didn't realize when I was there how important and how great Hillsdale was and football gave me confidence in that aggressive arena. 
life is full of hard things. There's always adversity. There's always problems you're going to encounter. That drives me to be better myself. Drives me to make the company better. That competitive nature is what has given me the tools professionally. There's a set of rules, but at the end of the day, you're still trying to win. And I love to wake up and try to win. Brent, on behalf of the Alumni Association of Hillsdale College, it's my great honor to present you with the Distinguished Alumnus Award in Management. Congratulations. Thank you, and uh, that was a great in introduction, Carrie. And speaking of introductions, I need to start with a quick story about President Arn. Uh, so I was a senior at Hillsdale, and we were invited to a dinner uh, at President Arn's house, and the guest of honor was Pat Sajak. So we are all excited, and uh, you know, it's a fancy dinner, and a celebrity there, and uh, about 10 minutes before the, uh, the dinner is about to start, President Arn comes up to me and says, Brent, uh, you're going to give the intro and the toast to Mr. Sajak. My eyes were about this big and talk about unprepared. Uh, so he put me on the spot and I managed to make my way through it, but, um, but thank you. <laughs> so thank you. Um, I am humbled and honored. There are so many people that are so much more deserving of this award than me, and I just appreciate it, appreciate uh, the award. I wanna thank, uh, first and foremost, my wife and former Hillsdale grad, as you heard, uh, Lindsay. So my professional journey starts and ends with her. Without her support, her guidance, uh, her patience, I wouldn't be standing up here. Uh, my parents who are here, Dave and Barb. Uh, my dad taught me how to, to strive to be the best, how to, to drive for that. And the work ethic, I was front, I was front row to one of the hardest working men um, you'd ever know. And uh, my mom, her humility, uh, I learned my, her humility and her sense of humor. Uh, couldn't do it without her. My in-laws are here tonight, Randy and Harriet Berlin, and they have these jokes about in-laws. Not true here. I totally, I love them and, and their support uh, and their love has just been great. Uh, my brothers, Luke and Nick, and my other family here, Aunt Bonnie and my grandma Shirley, uh, and then my great friends. Uh, this was a this was a journey, as you saw there, and everybody has their journeys. And this was a journey, and you're all such important part of this journey. Uh, finally, I'd like to thank Hillsdale College. You're not a number at Hillsdale College. You're an individual. You have the chance to lead. You have the chance to succeed. You're given that opportunity here, and the free market values, the entrepreneurial spirit that was instilled in me. So when this opportunity came for us to have this little chance at chasing our own American dream in Columbus, Nebraska, I know those seeds from Hillsdale that were planted 20 years ago, I know that they helped give me the confidence to seize that opportunity. Thank you. Better take this.
receiving our second Distinguished Alumnus Award this evening is Dale Allen, class of 1981. Dale resides in Scottsdale, Arizona, and is the former Global Sports Marketing Director for the Jordan brand at Nike. A native of Toledo, Ohio, Dale majored in Business Administration and Accounting at Hillsdale, while dominating the free throw record on the Charger basketball team, a record he still holds today. Dale was a three-time NAIA All-American and was part of the first class inducted into the Hillsdale Athletic Hall of Fame in 1997. I'm told he's probably the best basketball player the college has ever had grace its course still to this day. After Hillsdale, Dale was a member of the USA Basketball Team Jones Cup International in Serbia. He played semi-professionally in Venezuela. After spending 15 years in sales at Nike, Dale eventually transitioned to brand management, working alongside Michael Jordan as the global director of the Jordan brand. Dale's experiences with Jordan and Nike took him across the globe, managing relationships with signature athletes overall brands, including Chris Paul, Russell Westbrook, Derek Jeter, Maya Moore. He also fostered joint ventures for sports organizations such as the NBA, NFL, MLB, NASCAR, and the like. Dale and his wife, Yolanda, who could not be here with us tonight, have four boys, Nehemiah, Emmanuel, Christian, and Joshua. Will Dale please come forward? Oh. Dale.
music sales was huge for me. Uh, because now, working with athletes, and they compete at the highest level of it in the sport, and have those great sport moments, it helped drive the consumer to retail. In the consumer mind, we were just a basketball brand. And so we made that transition from a basketball brand to a cool culture style brand, to now saying, okay, well, how do we have the elite of the elite in this brand? But in athletes, you got to stay at that level, and that's where the challenge is. seeing the world through the music of basketball. I've seen more of On behalf of the Alumni Association of Hillsdale College, it's my great honor to present you with the Distinguished Alumnus Award for Outstanding Professional Achievement in Marketing. Congratulations. Wow. Uh, I give honor to the Lord, who's my personal savior. Um, I had some things that I wanted to say, but there's so many things to talk about. And I jotted some things down in my room today, but I realized that I graduated in 81. So 81 makes me old. <laughs> because I did the calculation right before I left my room, and 81 means 40 years. And they gave me two minutes to talk for 40 years. I can't do that. So if I take two and a half minutes, please have me back or don't judge me. But what I would like to say to everyone here is what a phenomenal ride in an individual that if Hillsdale College have not given me a chance, that video that you saw wouldn't be what that video is. I can only think of four words that would put all of the 40 years in perspective for me as a young kid coming from Toledo, Ohio. I am so grateful 
the scripture that I left Ohio was, I can do all things, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And I believe that, and I sung that, and every challenge that I face, that's what held me together then and now. No one can tell me no, because God has already promised it to me, because it's written, it's documented, it is in his word. So because of that, I can't go back to being a doubter, if it can. I'm living proof. When I stepped on Hillsdale College, I had other scholarship offers, and I was talking to Dr. Aaron this, after, Aaron this afternoon, and I told him that it was, and many of you may not be aware of it, but Dean Hendy was the president of the school at the time, and I came up for my recruiting trip. And of course, I didn't know what Hillsdale was about, and I asked him, if you can guarantee me that as a student athlete, that I can get out with the class that I came in with, I'm yours. And he said, and I said, but there's one asterisk behind that. I want to get out with a meaningful degree that wouldn't allow for me to be stereotyped as just a, an athlete. And he said, what would you like to study? And I said, business administration. He said, you got it. I can guarantee you that. And by the time the college coach came up to take me back down to the field house to show me what the opportunity was for basketball, that wasn't important because Dean Hendy at that time gave me a commitment out of his mouth and to my father and I that he would guarantee if I did the work in the classroom that I would get out with a meaningful degree and the rest is history because everything that I relied on when I left Toledo was just that one scripture was Philippians 14, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ. I didn't really care less what happened on the basketball court, but the game of life began there. My journey has been phenomenal, but I must pause because that video, I didn't get here by myself. So there's four things that I definitely want to make sure that I made a, a point to talk to all of you that don't know me in this room, that you are learning about me, but I appreciate it. And there's this things, the four things that I want to talk to you about is they end with F-U-L. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for this day and this opportunity, and I'm grateful for all you that have an opportunity to witness this. My teammates, the brothership and the brotherhood that we've had on our teams, we're in 2021 now. There's a lot of division among us. But what Hillsdale College done for me was prepared me for that video. And what I mean by that is I'm grateful for that experience. Because when I arrived at Hillsdale College and I actually saw the student body of Hillsdale College, there was not a lot of people that looked like me. And to this day, it's still not a lot of people that look like me. But I'm grateful because what Hillsdale taught me in my four years that they don't have to look like you. If they have the same foundation that you have and the desire that you have to be, they are like you. If I cut you or I cut myself, what do we do? We bleed red, is that correct? So in bleeding red, we are all one. And so what I realized from Hillsdale College is that when I got to corporate America, there's boardrooms that I sat in, there's athletes that I talked to, there's entertainers that I talk to, just the form of life. They all may not look like me, but that is the one treasure that I take away from Hillsdale College because it made me prepared. My teammates, my roommate are here tonight, and there's many more that wanted to be here, but they send their appreciation for this moment and this acknowledgement. But I'm grateful. I am so, so grateful for the school believing in me to give me a chance. When I came out of high school, I didn't have the academics that I need to be in, qualified to be at Hillsdale College, but they gave me a chance. And then Hillsdale College gave me an option in life to have that video done because my option was I got a guarantee from the president of the school that I would get out in the four years in the class that I graduated with. That's the chance that I got. And I took advantage of that option and I got my degree. Majorly important. The other foe is thankful. So it's grateful that I had the opportunity and I'm so thankful 
and I wish that I could come up and introduce myself to each and every one of you. But I just saw two young men go before me as recipients. And we all have a story. Isn't that amazing? And they don't look like me. But our stories and our passion and our drive is where we are all as one. We hurt inside. We have feelings. We have desires. We have things that we're all aligned with and we don't even know. There's one thing that life has taught me is you really don't know who you know until you know them or when you go through something. And that's what I learned from of being an athlete. When you go through tough times, you know who the players are. And who the players aren't, you build them up to be a player. And for me, being thankful for everybody that's been around me, my grandmother who gave me Philippians 4, 413, my mother and father, my father's deceased, who would leave his seven to three job and drive from Toledo, Ohio, and make it here every home game before tip off. And I was just talking to Eddie Peeper, who was one of my teammates, and I said it's amazing now, 40 years later, you and I are sitting next to each other, and our parents bonded. It wasn't about color. They bonded through the vehicle of us playing in an, or an orange object. That was special, because now it's moments that we share with our kids. That's what 40 years is all about. Our teammates, our friends and family, because my extension to everyone in this room is a big thing. I'm from Hillsdale College, and I'm very, very proud of that. I'm proud of the program that is here right now. I'm proud of the athletics that is here at Hillsdale College. I've already, and I guess you can cut this out the video, uh, my 13-year-old is um, committed to coming to Hillsdale College. He don't know that yet. <laughs> but uh, out of my four boys as basketball players, I had the three other ones play D1 basketball. It's very successful, but they're great in the classroom, and they're great individuals. I'm a very proud father. I've been married 30-plus years, and I got an awesome wife to have done what I have done and her for being supportive, and just the friends and family and the prayers of everyone else. I am so grateful. The, under is, the other thing is successful. There's a difference in learning about being successful. My journey has been so amazing, so many stories to be told, but through the adversity has made me who I am. From the highlights that you see of working with special athletes and, and engaged in their energy, that's all great because there's historical moments, but the lows of having to deal with an athlete to build them back up to realize that that's all fame and glory to give them the foundation that I got from Hillsdale because that's all I had. A lot of it that I never had to, the pocketbook, that, or pocketbook or the wallet that they have. And I felt like I was out of place because who am I? I'm just a little kid from Toledo, Ohio, and I work for the Jordan brand, and I don't have millions and millions of dollars that I can throw away at any given moment. But it was a platform that gave me to witness them to them. And in being able to witness to them who my Jesus Christ Savior is, gave me a platform to use that vehicle and use it well. Success is lonely. And it's a long journey. And it didn't, and it's interesting because the last time I was here, second to last time I was here, I played an alumni game. Not good news. <laughs> not good news. It is not good news because just the way that something happened that changed my life. So there's a lot of things that's why I'm connected to Hillsdale. I had never been taped before in the four years that I played here. I never, had, never was injured. I played every game that I was here in the four years that I was here, and I thank God for that. But for me to come back in alumni game, and I've got the new guys coming in, it's like, oh, your record's up there, yada, yada, yada. And uh, I understand you were good. I said, I was okay. I come out on the floor, and I'm going through layup line, and I blow my knee out. I hit the floor. I had no idea what happened. And so my wife and I, at the time, we had to drive from Hillsdale College back to Atlanta to have my surgery. And this, the hurdle of coming back after being hurt and never being hurt before. And this is after over, playing ball overseas and et cetera. I really understood now what it means to be a athlete because the challenge of getting back up when you fall down was something that now I had to deal with. But through that transition, because again, my scripture is I can do all things through Christ Jesus which strengthens me. 
I leaned on what's next for me. And what's next for me was to change lives and individuals. And as I sit across in this room, I see the lives that are changed at Hillsdale College. Some of them are here, some of them are not. But I hope and I make a commitment to Hillsdale College to help to change lives and to talk about things that we can change and learn from each other because I'm passionate by that. And if no other day happens, I want you all to know that Hillsdale College is a place for everyone for everyone, not just people that don't look like me, but people that look like me, green, brown, and yellow, whatever the color you may be, because they are passionate, they're driven, and they're committed. And as you look across our educational platform right now, we need commitment. And the educators and et cetera, we need to support you as much as possible now because you're much needed. The responsibility and the burden has gotten much heavier, and we got to do the lifting. The last one is respectful. I am so respectful, and I can say this from the bottom of my heart. I thank all of you for showing up for this moment for me. It's priceless for the things that I've accomplished, but those are just steps along my journey. Because before that journey occurred, those journeys occurred, I had my own stand up playing basketball where I was held hostage before in Havana, Cuba. I've held hostages in Russia playing basketball. But those are the stories that made me and built character of myself and just who I am. But, but it was the road to get me to what you just saw in a snapshot. But along the way, I had a lot of people that I respected that gave me the advice. And to Coach Tarp and the team here now, they extended their arms to me to come back and talk to the kids about the things and what I've done and the alumni the, the committee that selected me to be a part of this, I'm grateful. And I'm very res respectful. Anything that I can do in my power to return what you did for me today and did for my family, and this, this recognition and award, I deeply appreciate this. It won't go unknown. Anything you want from me, anything I can do for this school and this program and these programs, I'm here. Thank you so much. Our Tower Award is the Alumni Association's top award for service to Hillsdale College. The Tower is Central Hall, the symbol of the college's courage, resilience, and steadfastness. This year's Tower's recipient exemplifies all of these things and more. As her friend and peer on the Alumni Association Board, it is my honor to introduce Mary Ann Rotoli, Class of 1995. Mary Ann joined the Alumni Association Board in 2012. She has served faithfully for nearly 10 years, dedicating herself to the Career Services Committee and eventually elected by her peers to represent the board as secretary, vice president, and then president. Each of these terms are two years, and she is currently wrapping up her service as immediate past president. Mary Ann has always said yes when it comes to Hillsdale whether it's helping at regional events in Chicago, speaking at career services and admission events, hiring and mentoring students, or generously giving back each year as a member of the President's Club. Marianne's leadership on the Alumni Association Board was particularly pivotal during a transitional time, and her unifying and skillful approach was a triumph. Marianne's dedication to the college is just one example of her commitment to the things that truly matter, whether it's her career or her family and friends. As a senior vice president of Octagon Mar Marketing, Mary Ann has a demanding job traveling the world representing sponsors and brands in the sports and entertainment industry. Mary Ann was recently selected by her peers and leaders to receive Octagon's 2018 Mike Burton Award, recognizing fairness, integrity, transparency, and a commitment to doing the right thing personally and professionally. At Hillsdale, Mary Ann majored in English and was a member officer of Kappa Kappa Gamma. 
She is devoted to her faith and a beloved aunt to 18 nieces and nephews. Marianne is originally from Monroe, Michigan, but currently resides in Chicago, but she is moving back to Michigan soon. Now please give your attention to the screen to meet Marianne Rotoli. I always wanted to be part of was giving back to my community. 
Mary Ann, on behalf of the Alumni Association, it is my great honor to present you with the Tower Award for service to Hillsdale College. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Arn, a, a man I am very proud to call my friend after many years of, of speaking together. Thank you also, Carrie. I frequently reference Carrie as my best friend from college, and we graduated 20 years apart. And I mean that sincerely. She's, she's a mentor and a friend. She also talks me up really well, which is just super sweet. Um, I also want to thank John Servini, Gregor Haystead, Colleen McInnes, Ken Koopmans, Joanna Wisely, Jeff Lantis, it's his fault I'm here, you guys, um, and all the faculty and staff at Hillsdale College. You not only admitted me um, and have invited me and given me opportunities to stay involved with the college that I love, but you maintain its virtue and you complete its mission daily so that we all have a meaningful cause to which we can contribute. It's an honor to be affiliated with this institution and it's an honor and a privilege to be affiliated with the other three gentlemen that have been recognized tonight. I'm pretty confident if the four of us get together, we can do something pretty remarkable. <laughs> um, I wrote down my words of acceptance last August, but much has changed since then. I lost my dad to COVID in January. He was my hero and a warrior for this college a true warrior for this college. It is because of him that I'm here. While dad was in his final days, he asked us to read things to him. It was tough for him to talk. He talked, but it was tough for him to talk. Since we didn't know if this evening would ever happen, I read him my speech. He told me it was perfect, something he did not say often. Am I right? Yeah, he did not say often. So if you'll allow me, I would like to read it as I read to my dad who I know is here tonight. My niece, Maria Tyson, who is a proud 2018 alumna of Hillsdale College and Kappa, is quasi-obsessed with Enneagram tests, and she's pretty darn good at predicting what number will be assigned to each of her family members and friends. She called me out immediately as a two, which, if you boil it down to a one-word description, is a helper or a giver. It irritated me that she was right not only because I despise being predictable, but because I thought immediately, so I help others and that's it? Am I incapable of achieving myself? Have I no talent at all, or am I simply afraid of using them? I was humbly reminded shortly after that of the importance of such a role. I was attending mass at my home parish of Old St. Pat's in downtown Chicago, which, by the way, has the most beautiful and inspiring musical liturgy I have ever experienced. I invite you all to come sometime when, when you're in the Windy City. As I was sitting in my standard balcony seat that Sunday, the choir tuned up one of my favorite songs, a divine intervention to remind me of the great words of Mother Teresa and the importance of service. We can do no great things, only small things with great love. If I have offered any service to the world, to this college or otherwise, it is because of the role models of my parents. They introduced me to my faith and my God. They instilled in me a pride for my country and the freedoms it provides. The appreciation for the blessing of family. Two of my beautiful, talented, and siblings are with me here tonight. And they introduced me to Hillsdale College. I am blessed to have learned love, compassion, and the importance of giving to others from my parents, Joseph and Cheryl Rotoli. If I have contributed good to this world, it is because of you, mom and dad. This award is an extension of you. I leave you with this thought. On the day the team visited me in Chicago for the filming of, by the way, these remarkable videos, I read the Daily Gospel, which appropriately came from Matthew 10 and perfectly epitomizes the way I view my role as an alum of this college. Without cost, you have received. Without cost, you are to give. Thank you.
This concludes the presentation of awards. Congratulations again to all. Can we give a round of applause one more time for our wonderful recipients? I'd now like to ask Colleen back to the podium for a few closing comments. That was very inspiring and touching. Thank you, Carrie and Dr. Arn, and congratulations again to all of our very deserving honorees. I'm sorry. I have a few short, Marianne, man. I have a few short housekeeping announcements uh, before we adjourn. This has been a very fun weekend. Thank you all for coming. For those of you who are here this whole weekend, uh, there's a lot of work that went in from many people, from the marketing department putting together all of the branding and the pieces. Brian Springer, who designed everything, is over there, to Bon Appetit, to maintenance. Um, to obviously my team, which I'm going to mention in, in a minute, um, but is a lot of moving parts. Uh, we had a lot of fun. Uh, it was fun seeing all of your kids. Um, I hope they loved it here as much uh, as we all do, and um, hopefully that will put a spark in their hearts for later on. Um, but I have a few things that, some little business details to get, get out of the way um, before we end the formal, our formal program and party more in the back. Um, but I invite you to stay for that afterglow in the reception area immediately following this program. Uh, we are very happy that our faculty jazz band, the Hillcats, led by our director of jazz ensembles and trumpet teacher, Chris McCory, was available to be part of the program tonight. They'll be here throughout the afterglow, and I'd like to see you all let loose a little out there on the dance floor before the end of the night. Uh, we'll be serving brunch tomorrow in the Grucox Student Union which is the dining hall, um, as a Sunday brunch option. It'll be a little more upscale than the last two mornings as our Sunday brunch. The brunch will run from 9 to 12. I highly encourage you all to join us for the worship service in Christ Chapel. At 10 a.m., Dr. Ken Calvert will be giving the message and will have special performances of sacred music by several students and our organist. It will be lovely, and the chapel is an, an experience in and of itself. In case you were tempted, don't forget to pick your kids up at camp in the morning between 8 to 9, for those of those kids that are at Camp Machendo. We scheduled the morning the way we did so they could join us for lunch or uh, for brunch and worship in the chapel. We'd love to see you and them there. I want to acknowledge the alumni office staff and our student team for coordinating and executing a wonderful weekend. It has been a fun pilot project. We'll see what the series holds. I want to particularly thank Ashley Sallows, who joined the alumni team late, uh, late last summer and hit the ground running with this major event. She hit the ball out of the park. <clears throat> She's worked tirelessly and without any stress, which would not be my story if I was in her shoes. Uh, thank you, Ashley. At least you didn't show your stress. Um, lastly, I'd like to thank Dr. Arn and John Servini for supporting this idea, this white and blue weekend, and participating in it amidst a very busy time for the college. Our alumni are a very important part of the Hillsdale family, and spending time together will continue to build that relationship uh, for a lifetime. So mark your calendars. Homecoming and our 2021 Alumni Awards Banquet will be on September 24th and 25th, because remember, this is the 2020 Awards Banquet, which is why your awards are all dated in September. It's been such a joy to welcome you all back to campus for this special weekend. I've enjoyed getting to know many of you, and we hope that through programs like this, our national alumni receptions and homecoming, you'll continue to stay connected to the college for the rest of your life. As you know, there's no place like it. We need Hillsdale College now more than ever. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs>